So in this video, we're going to be going over how to add custom items to your PSS store, to the back end of your PSS store. Once you log in from your account dashboard, from the main screen, you're going to head on over to catalogs, search private. Now, uh, this part here, adding your items as a reminder, uh, this is a two-step process. Three, if you want to create if you haven't created uh, categories already. Um, actually, before we start this process, uh, let's make sure that you have created uh, the proper category or categories that you'll be uploading these items to. Um, to do that, you're going to go to Web Store Categories and you can um, uh, add a parent category, new root category. And we'll, uh, just for the sake of this, we'll just call this demo, demo items. And also, again, for the sake of this video, we'll add a subcategory. We'll just call this demo item sub. And just like that, very easy. You've created your parent category as well as your subcategories within that. So once that's done, you can go ahead and close and continue on. Um, so to add items and to push it to your store, again, this part is a two-step process. We'll just click on New. Now, uh, as a reminder as well, PSS is creation-based. And what that means is um, you can create items. You're not able to edit any existing items. And what I mean by that is um, specifically the brand manufacturer name and the product group name. You wanna make sure to watch your spelling and make sure that you've got the naming convention however you'd like to see it. Um, if there's any misspelling or, or you know misspellings or uh, this isn't what you're wanting your naming convention to be, you would have to delete the item or items and then enter it all over again. So just as a reminder, uh, watch your spelling and make sure that you've got um, the correct naming convention uh, set up ahead of time. So for this case here, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, for a brand, we'll just call this Michelin. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, you do see this drop down menu. This is functionality that comes with the browser. Uh, this is not functionality that comes with PSS. So, uh, in this case here, as you can see, I'm using Chrome. This is a drop down functionality that Chrome has. So, This is your simple WYSIWYG editor. Um, what you see is what you get, WYSIWYG. And so uh, this is where your description is. This is where you're going to put the description of your item. You do have a uh, freedom uh, in this. And what I mean is that you can enter description. You can also enter any uh, additional shipping costs for this if you'd like. Uh, anything that you'd like the customer to know uh, regarding this product, you can enter here. Once everything looks good here, go ahead and press save. And as you can see, this uh, overlay screen shows up on the right-hand side. Uh, we ask that you keep the manufacturer uh, part number uh, or SKU number unique to this particular product. Uh, since we're talking about tires, uh, let's say that these were 17-inch tires. Um, I can put a dash 17 at the end of it. Um, and again, this that's up to you. Uh, you don't have to put a dash in it. You can just put you know 17 in it. But however, you'd like to name it something that uh, you add at the end of it that's going to make it unique to that particular variation. If we're talking about you're going to upload different variations. Uh, in this case here, I'm adding you know a tire size. So um, Go ahead and add the information accordingly. And once this is, uh, once everything looks good here, uh, oh, also you can add uh, images from within this listing as well. 
click on add upload new images. You can choose from an existing uh, image set. Let me remove that. And uh, you can choose from existing uh, images that you have already uploaded, or you can just go ahead and browse up to you. And uh, at this point, what's taking over here is the Windows user interface. So just find those images that you have them stored, select them, and then click open. And actually, let me do that right now. We'll say that, uh, let's go ahead and say that this is a picture of a tire. I don't have any pictures of tires, uh, but you get a quick little thumbnail view of, of this. Once, if that looks good, just go ahead and upload that file and boom, just that quickly. Um, because there's already an existing one here, it overrode over the existing one, but um, you would see it here. And once that looks good, just go ahead and select that and any additional images that you'd like showing up with that particular listing. For the sake of this demo, I'll just go ahead and select two images. Once you're done with that, just go ahead and close it out. And you can switch the order of these images. Um, you can switch how they appear, which one appears first or second, by just clicking on the left and right arrows. Once everything looks good here, just go ahead and press save. And as you, can, as you can see, you have that first variation. I'm going to go ahead and add another variation. And again, keep the SKU number unique to that. In this case, let's just say these are 20 inch tires. Let's just go ahead and do this. And again, you can go ahead and select the image or images and attach it to this listing. Once everything looks good, go ahead and press save. And now you have a listing with two variations. Adding variations, keep in mind, does create the drop down menu for your customer uh, for this particular listing. So if everything looks good, uh, then you can go ahead and close out. One thing, one other thing I did want to point out that if you're wanting to add uh, a sales a sale price or uh, inventory levels to this, you go back into the listing after you've created it, or excuse me, after uh, go back into those variations after you've created them. And then now you see that you've got an option to add quantity and also a sale price if you like. And again, for the sake of this demo, we'll just go ahead and add a sales price. What this does is that both prices will be displayed uh, because you do want your customer to see that they are getting that, uh, they, they are getting those savings. Um, the way that the real listing will look is it will have the, the MSRP price with a slash through it and it will show the sales price. And that will be the active one. And you would do the same for this listing as well. Press save. And once everything looks good, you can go ahead and close this out. It will automatically refresh. And the newest items that you add show up at the bottom. Oldest ones are at the top. Once everything looks good, and this is how you want to push it to your store, just go ahead and click on the item or items. And now you want to click on web store. Add your uh, notification email in this uh, field, and then choose the category. And in this case here, what we're going to do is I'm going to throw it under the demo item sub. Once everything looks good, just go ahead and press confirm. We ask that you allow up to 24 hours for the item or items that you push to your web store to show up in your store. They can be searchable and they can be added to your customer's cart. You'll know that it's been successfully added to the web store when uh, this turns into a green checkbox, just as this. So uh, 24 hours or you know, 24 to 48 hours, 48 hours being the max, uh, the most extreme. Um, and for 48 hours, it's because you're uploading thousands of items and you're pushing them all at once to your store. And so this is how 
you are going to add items. You will, uh, because I just entered, you saw me enter my uh, email. Once I receive that email notification from PSS stating that the items I pushed to my store uh, are ready, uh, you can then go ahead and search for them in your store and they should be good to go. And this is how you enter items into your store manually, your custom items.